All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back. We did things right this time. We did auto start before the show actually started. So, yeah, yes, we're working. You know, we're, go we're going places. Okay. Well, welcome back to the uh, the BS playlist. Uh, I am on today with my host and co-host, Peter. Going to go for it. Welcome back. Hello. Glad to have you. The, the the host and co-host who's producing and not doing it right because the video started for some stupid reason. I have no clue why. But it was we, God's plan. We, we, right, we, sh we shall fix that. Yeah, he was deflating before we got to deflate him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have one of my editors, uh, Neslig. He edits my scripts uh, that, that I write, and I'm very grateful to him for that. My, I believe my channel is... Um, of a much better quality because he edits my scripts. So welcome to the show. Hello, hello. And we have someone new joining us today. We have Jefferson Spatchcock. So welcome. Hello. Good to be here. Hey, Jeff. Glad to have you. Uh, have, have you ever seen my channel before? You ever watched it? I have, but I, I got to confess, ah. it's been a while. I've seen I've seen you in debates before. I think more. Oh, than my I, condolences. So I've seen <laughs> your stuff mirrored and on on your channel, but it's it's been a while because a lot of this. Uh, well, d have you ever done like the flat Earth stuff? Was that years ago? Oh God, no! I never stepped okay. into that yeah. quagmire because oh. that's too that's too low even for me. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. All right. You know, we we um. I debated uh, standing for truth a number of years ago, and uh, and he never came back. And he was kind of the lowest I'm willing to stoop because I, with, no, no, with no, flat no, earthers, no, 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 no. That has to be that has that? to be Matt Powell. You think it's Matt? Okay, all right, all right, fine, fine. Matt right. Powell, which Matt was Powell, also a few years ago. Yeah, and you also debated Kent Hovind, so that's another step up. Yeah. Although. Although, although standing for truth is a copycat of Kent Hovind, like yeah, just copy paste of the argument, so yeah, <laughs> it's the same. It makes it even he makes them even worse, which is the funny thing about it. <laughs> like I, when you watch his stuff, it's it's like yeah, it's Kent Hovind retreads, but even worse. Well, <laughs> he used to be a secondhand car salesman, so secondhand yak would actually arguments <laughs> not be arguments. that far off. I mean. They get worse the the more they've been like retread. Yeah. I was gonna say it's it wasn't second hand cars. He was literally a second hand car salesman. He was tier two, like yeah. he was only brought in. You know when the when the tier <laughs> one guys couldn't close the deal, they're like, all right, you yeah, you guys there's, come in there and see. There's can... there's a hilarious video that uh I I may or may not have thrown around a little because they had a they had a gong every single time they sold a car. They went into the hallway and they bashed a gong. And I, I did at some point <laughs> tell him that uh, he should start using that on his streams, that every single time Kent Hovind made, according to him, a good point, he should bang the gong in order to give it some flair. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. I yeah mean... that'll, that'll really annoy people. I think it's a good way to drive away viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I used I um, used my so, Dawkins soundboard earlier today and almost drove off people. I was his voice in, does that. I, yeah. I was in a hangout and I have this soundbite of him saying surprise, surprise. And then everything went silent <laughs> and then King Xerxes said, Do don't ever do that again. Because <laughs> everyone jumped. That was fun. Rumor has it if you if you play one of Darth's monologues through a loudspeaker and just point it down to the ground, it drives moles away. Mm -hmm. That's just what <laughs> I heard. Yeah, I have only been in a hangout with him like once, and it was with you, Peter. And I think yeah. he stormed off after like twenty minutes. Yeah, it didn't last very oh, long. What was the hangout where he he wasn't in control? Yeah, well, it was no. on Peter's channel, I think. It, yeah, it was okay. either on my channel or on Jackson's channel. I, I forgot, but that no, was I'm back in sure the it was on your channel in in the Google uh, Hangout days, and so we we shot him a link. Well, uh, because the we had a chat on on my channel with um, Jungle Jargon, which actually caused Shannon Q to rage quit. So that was <laughs> yes, yes. Um, 
Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. That was actually before she had her own channel, and then yeah, she got what was it? Got to like a thousand subscribers before she even had a channel, which is pretty yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. So back in the back in the good old days. Anyways, all right. So, uh, folks, uh, last time we so we finished the Frank Turek video last time, mercifully, and then we watched a bit of a Matt Powell video. So Matt Powell is. I guess you might say like third hand Kent Hovind. Yeah. <laughs> it's he's that bad. He, like his stuff was, we got to the point where it was like every word he was saying was wrong. Um, well, we're not going to torture you with that today. We'll, you know, we'll, well have it in the queue for later. Hovind once made a, a video where Arn Ra said that, um, there were less words than lies. In, in I've heard that. Yeah. yeah so I, I think I think uh, Matt is trying to to beat him on <laughs> on that particular point because. But so the the yeah. the new guy, uh, the so def deflate. the the def deflated uh, so one, is he Dutch? I have I have a. I don't. He has an accent of some sort. I'm not yes. sure what he what he is, but he does have an accent. Yeah. Because I'm going to feel um, terrible if he's Dutch. <laughs> he's the one one dutch creationist left yeah uh, so we uh, or well i would say i encountered his videos uh like a while back but if you guys have been around on this channel for a while you'll know that we've done a whole bunch of different videos on the cameron explosion we've done like six different videos we've responded to long story short we did a couple of videos on the cameron explosion itself we did a video on the Precambrian ancestors to the Cambrian explosion. We've done loads and loads of videos. I even, I even wrote a, you know, a script for Professor Dave about the Cambrian explosion. So with and, this one, and I, I keep like, saying, I, I keep saying it because it's funny as hell. You did a debate on the Cambrian explosion where the entire Cambrian <laughs> explosion wasn't even mentioned. So, but that's I, that is also true. Yeah, I still find that so, very funny. Yes, that yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm sure it's funny for you. I was there, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it was. Or in the room. Um, so uh, I didn't want to do another Cambrian debunk on this channel because I was like, we've, we've already done so many of them. What's the point of, you know, making another long drawn out response to this guy when we've already basically covered all of his points before? So then when Vice Rhino uh, asked me to do a video on his channel, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And so we did that that video with the first video in deflates sort of series about like science and intelligent design, because I don't know if you guys have like looked through his channel, but he's obsessed with Alex O'Connor, like just obsessed with Alex O'Connor. It's, it's weird. Um, and so he also did a series where he talks about like, uh, you know, he just sort of retreads, uh, Darwin's doubt, which is Stephen Meyer's 2013 book uh, about the camera explosion and how it supports gods somehow or another not really sure um so oh, uh, i i looked something up i think i think uh, uh it's, it's it's public knowledge so it's, okay. uh, it's not uh it's not it's not uh to, not to uh uh what do you call Question. it dox anybody and uh, no, not to dox anybody but uh, he, okay. he's from lebanon he's from lebanon deflate really if, if i think so if i if i'm looking it correctly i think he's just from lebanon Okay. But he's, that's interesting. He's not native. Or maybe, he? yeah, maybe. I don't... He, it says on it's like it says on a website called Steiger that uh, he has lived there for for the past nine years. So yeah, that that well, would make sense. Well, he also did a video where he details his background, and I didn't watch the whole video, but he might say it in there. I don't know. Um, I don't know. At any rate, uh. He's not an American, not American. Uh, and I don't think he's Canadian. I'll say that too. I will throw that one out there. Yeah, uh, he's, he's definitely European, I think. Yeah. So, so anyway, so then I did the, uh, or well, we did, we wrote the script for the deflate video. Then we did that on Vice Rhino's channel. And I think Vice Rhino did a couple more videos on deflate. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think a while back he did some more. Um, so yeah, deflate just kind of, uh, bandies around the same arguments Meyer did which don't require like any critical thought whatsoever uh and we talked about several of them in the in the turret thing so so uh yeah we ready uh, i think so 
As ready All as, right, as we will be. <laughs> I guess that's true. Let's jump let's, right in. Let's get deflated. Okay. We inflate. Are deflate. you familiar with the basics of evolutionary theory? Then you might no. know that the fossil record actually puts evolution in real oh, trouble. Yeah, you might also know that various theories have been put. So he starts off with the dumbest thing ever. The fossil record puts <laughs> evolution in trouble. Well, I'm uh, sure he's going to explain how, so... Yeah. But, but I, I, I imagine him saying, well, do you know the basics of evolution? Well, neither do I, but we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, that would have been yeah. really funny. And, yeah. like, you know, props to him for that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least he's honest. No. Anyway. And he's got, he's, we have to say, he's got some decent production value. I mean... Right. right. I mean... Oh, Absolutely. It's... I don't think that lamp is real. <laughs> <laughs> this is my guess. I don't know. It looks it looks real. That's nice. I just want to. I just want to spin up conspiracy theories. He's got a Are those real? Nice background blur. If he's if he's Dutch, then an orange lamp would make sense. But let, let's continue. <laughs> forward by Darwin's advocates in an attempt to fix that problem. In this video, I'm going oh, to no, show I you why I can these attempts not only fail, but even amplify the Darwinian so, dilemma. Hold so on, this pause. Should be in He's German. Okay, so first of all... He's German. He's German? Yeah, definitely. Okay, maybe he is. The well, way he says, all, out, he um, says video with a W, he's German. Uh, <laughs> um, so first of all, I want to point out uh, to, to uh, Jefferson's point, uh, I don't know if you saw the video, but it was like a long time ago that the Discovery Institute put out, and like I remember Ann Gager was in it and a couple of other people, but they use this like laboratory background, but it was a green screen, and there was a whole kerfuffle <laughs> about it because uh, the friendly atheist was like, "This is fake. They faked the background. <laughs> they like bought this this um this background oh, yeah, to yeah. use we, it. We have video. we have our own laboratory. Look." <laughs> right, but it well, was yeah, it was just a, it was fake. So I I have to say, so this studio behind me, one hundred percent real. I'm there right now, one hundred percent real. <laughs> right, just saying. I wish they would go. I wish they would go a little further and like, okay, you see the fake background and you're like, wow, I can't tell if that lab behind them is fake. And then you see like animated angels in lab coats doing like magical science stuff, you know, and kind of a CSI style montage, you know, just, yes. you know, just play and, you know, play it up. Uh, but yeah, they're not that. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, the other thing was, oh, okay. So I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Um, and I, I imagine Nestle already knows what I'm going to say. Um, so when he says the theory that or the hypotheses, whatever he said, that try to save the fossil record for evolution. Oh, no. One hundred percent. He's going to say punctuated equilibrium was invented to, like, prove that the fossil record does actually support evolution. And, the, and say, the only one, the only one, and the only one quote that uh, Stephen Jay Gould ever said, and he said nothing else. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. He's going to say that. We all know he's going to say it. Uh, he's going to say gradualism was defeated, so they replaced it with punctuated equilibrium, and it's just a lie. Like, it's just a lie. There's no... There's we... not even a shred of truth behind it. It's just a lie. Like, you can't say that he's misunderstanding it, because if you actually read Gould, you would know that it's just a lie. So... We, we also have Jamie oh, E in, in the chat, and he says, my current bet is that the claim about the fossil record is going to be a retread of the claim of forms ap appearing, forms ap appearing fully formed, I think species or, or, or animals fully formed and spontaneous yeah. in the Cambrian. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, he's definitely going to say that. He, he is absolutely going to say that, because oh, he, he does say it in... Um, he says in the other one, the one that I did for uh, Vice Friday's channel. So anyway, all right. all right, let's let him go on. Okay. Interesting. Hi, my name is Lucas, and this is my channel, Deflate, which challenges skeptics, strengthens believers, and creates a space for awesome discussions about God.
This is my Except second video really in discuss. my ongoing series on intelligent just, design. Just in videos. the previous episode, I talked <laughs> about how Darwin was painstakingly aware of the fact that his theory was diametrically opposed to the fossil record, which then as now shows that new animal, animal forms show up suddenly and without any intermediate <gasps> yeah. forms that they see them. Then. Wait, wait, Darwin was uh, pause. Can you pause and go back? Oh, great like pause. A couple uh, seconds great to pause. that picture. Can you, pause. can you go back to that picture, please? I do. The one he just what's what's wrong? Like what's wrong ago. with the one on screen right now? I think it's perfect. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just. No, I want to. I want to see the picture to show because he says the Cameron explosion, and he posts this picture. Oh, that one. Okay. Oof. Mm -hmm. So those things you see, so like the Nautiluses, or not in the Cambrian, the nope. shrimp, not in the Cambrian, um. All those what gastropods, a bite? Yeah, not sure. in the Cambrian. <laughs> that, that... Bivalves, I don't think those were in the Cambrian. Mm, were bivalves I, in the Cambrian, or those were I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, I think they were, but I'm not sure either. Maybe late, maybe late Cambrian. But at the very least, the Nautiluses and the shrimp were not in the Cambrian. How about those actually, large, I, actually, large I believe... seashells? I'm, I'm, I doubt that they were there. Uh, they, they they are they are there, but I believe they all there were also like an earlier group where they were there were two shells, but they couldn't close or open like uh, they, they didn't have a hinge. Oh, I think point. you're right. Late, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like at the at least like half of the animals in this picture were not there. But yeah, the trilobites were definitely there. But like middle Cambrian uh, brachiopods were there. I still give him I props that do he doesn't have any dinosaurs in that picture. You know what? He gets you're props right. for that. You're right. Props to him. Yeah. Jesus riding a seahorse <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Continue. All right. Yes. Only and without any intermediate forms preceding them. Darwin was hoping that as paleontology would progress, later discoveries would produce those forms and vindicate his theory. Yet the and exact right. opposite happened. Paleontologists Except have found even more evidence of new animal forms suddenly appearing just for the first bites. time out of the blue, as it were, in the era called the Cambrian, without any precursory forms in the preceding geological era. This phenomenon is called the Cambrian explosion, and it That's completely not what that defies means. the Darwinian idea hmm. of gradual change over time. Check out my first video okay, to get pause. a better idea of the. Okay, it might falsify. 1850s Darwinism, <laughs> but I got news for you, Deflate. We ain't in the 1850s anymore. Um, God bless America. Okay, so keep keep in mind, Darwin, keep in mind, these people, they have the Bible. The Bible never changes. So there, there are things added to it because we 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 added in the New Testament to get to the yeah. Bible. So this is how they approach science. You have yeah, but, right. Darwin science, and then some things get added, but Darwin science is still there. It's still completely right. valid these days. That's uh, his, how... his contributions in the form of natural selection. That, that's pretty much still, and also sexual selection, also. On, uh, yeah, yeah, and also and also a few other contributions that are less known, like uh, like pangenesis. Uh, no, no, no. Are you saying I mean, things he, that aren't true anymore? Or oh, I, I mean that there are also other contributions that are, that are oh, less contributions known. that he made. Oh, yeah, yeah, like his work on on um, barnacles. Worms. That yeah, also, yeah, his work yeah. on worms. His work on uh, orchids. Um, and like yeah, all mm -hmm. of the stuff that he did on like um, common ancestry or well, like the broad stroke stuff on common ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the that's the part where the Christians, Christian bros are like, nerds, like, who cares about worms and barnacles? You know? I mean, they're not wrong. In in fact, I would imagine even most biologists are like, worms or barnacles? Eh. I'm going to say something else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jackson, yeah. I, I need well, to I step on, in. So on... so we had we had the thing with the plants. We don't talk about the evolution of plants, apparently. So now we're going to ditch the barnacles <laughs> as well. I mean... Mm -hmm. If if we go like oh, this, there, there'll be nothing left. We talk oh, about dinosaurs and mammoths. That's it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> worms can get very crazy. Like uh, if you're familiar with our hemoglobin, for example, like our hemoglobin has four subunits. 
I think there are a few rooms where that like over a hundred subunits in the hemoglobin. <laughs> it's it's crazy. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. I I I mean, so Darwin was uh, also right though, of course, with uh, not everything he said about barnacles. Like uh, there was some sexual selection stuff he got wrong, but um, but his work on barnacles laid the foundation at least for work on barnacles for the next like 80 years and uh, as np life apologist points out yeah uh worms do help with the soil in fact that was his point it was like worms and vegetable mold or something like that and he talked about how much earth worms displace it's mm -hmm. a lot they displace a lot of earth um and they add nutrients to the soil through their feces and you know aerate the soil and all this other sort of stuff yeah absolutely worms are are super important um there's a good book um the evolution underground by i think it's is it martin brazier am i getting that right um where it's about i could be wrong uh someone fact check me on that uh the evolution underground well the point of the book is all about like organisms that burrow and he does talk about earthworms and all that sort of stuff and it's a really good book highly recommend um but yeah no darwin was so yeah darwin got stuff that was right um, or at the very least, he laid the foundation for uh, future discoveries, future um, theories that researchers could work on, which is really what science is all about. You don't want to build some theory that's a complete dead end. Like, don't worry about it. It was the flood or it was the creation week because that that doesn't tell you anything. And that provides no avenues by which to continue research. So as Anthony oh, Martin, barnacles are cool, too. Barnacles are pretty neat. Um, barnacles are like our shrimp on their backs. So the little legs that you see coming, or the little like feelers that you see coming out of barnacles, are the legs. It's very weird. Yeah. They're very it's, weird guys. It's, a, it's just a sessile, at least as adults. I think as larvae, they are like mo still mobile, and yeah. you, can, st you yes. can still see their uh, the obvious arthropod ancestry when they are larvae. But then mm -hmm. they. They hunker down and they become very, very weird later on. It's, it's similar to tunicates, right? Like the, the larvae of tunicates yeah. are also mm -hmm. more typical of chordates. And then when they grow up, they digest their own brains. <laughs> Much Basically. like a professor getting tenure. Much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> much, much like young earth creationists. Also yeah. true. Very fair. <laughs> um, I'm sure professors with tenure are happy we lumped them with creationists. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry anybody out there we love you peasy if you're listening we love you you're our favorite um all right i guess we're ready to move on i, I know a certain never mind never mind shall we continue yes details now in this video i'm going to walk you through three of the most important theories that have been proposed in the attempt to plug the hole and what you'll get to see at the end is that these theories oh, not go. only don't close that gap but actually widen it significantly so stay they with do, me they don't Let's close the hole they stretch historically, it historically one of yeah. the first hypotheses to be and we lost it's, monetization it's 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 not <laughs> yeah it's not that my mind is completely <laughs> off now i mean he's <laughs> Plugging holes and winding them. I'm I'm Dutch. I mean, honestly, <laughs> don't do that. Bye, money. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, host held that intermediate forms to the Cambrian animals mm. must exist somewhere in the fossil record of the Precambrian. Dun, dun, dun. This so-called artifact hypothesis claimed, however, That's not what the that the Precambrian layers says. were buried at the bottom of the ocean or under That's the bottom of the ocean. That's not what that says at all. Due to the rising and falling of ancient sea levels. Just like Darwin, who suggested okay, that the pause. missing fossils would... <laughs> Let's pause. Okay, so um, this claim that that Darwin thought the fossils were buried at the bottom of the ocean. I honestly don't know where it originates. Stephen Meyer says it in Darwin's Doubt, and he has no citation for it. There's no citation for that claim. Now, I'm not saying I haven't read everything Darwin wrote, um, and I haven't read everything everyone wrote, so I don't know if someone did, in fact, propose that, and he is like, it's just kind of common knowledge, like in the history of science. I've never heard it. I've read a fair number of books in, like, I've read several of Darwin's books. I've read several books from early in evolutionary theory. I've read early like neo-Darwinian books. I've never seen anyone propose that ever at any point. 
So I don't know where that claim comes from. If Jamie E, I know you're out there. If you can find it, have at it. Or if you guys know, like I'm all ears. I've just never heard it. Of course, the <clears throat> uh, researchers started figuring out that the that the the sea floor was pretty young, in like the 40s, like not nearly old enough to go back to the Cambrian. So I don't know at what time period researchers were like, okay, we got to scour the bottom of the ocean for fossils. I don't know when that would have been a thing in, in everything from what I've read. I don't know. I could be from, wrong. From I've this, just never from heard this that picture, from, from this picture is quite recently, and you don't need to have scuba gear to go that deep, apparently. But yeah. a, a snorkel is enough. The, the oldest... Um, Arn Ra may have mentioned that and said Darwin just said further down. Well, yeah, but further down just means, yeah, further in the rocks. Maybe that's under the sea. Yeah, I I, meh, I, don't I don't think that's what he meant. I don't think that's... I think he just meant lower in the strata. Um, because for a long time, plate tectonics was not known. And plate tectonics only became a thing because it turned out that the seafloor was, like, spreading. Researchers right. like Bruce Heason and Marie Tharp were looking at the seafloor in the 40s um, and like mapping it out and finding out that the seafloor is spreading. That's what, that's how we figure that out. And yeah, when that it, was, it, go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. If, if you want to finish for us, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say that. And that's when we figured out, you know, uh, how the continents were moving and what the age of the seafloor was. So it doesn't really match with this story. Anyways, go ahead. Right. But it's also, the, it's also the case like during Darwin's life, like I think, like, um, what was it before he was born, or or was uh, George Cuvier temporary with uh, Darwin? I, I don't remember. I think Cuvier was George slightly Cuvier. before Darwin. Right, but, right, right. No, yeah. but, but still, it's it's a very it, like paleontology was so young at the time yes. that not not too long ago people people believed extinction wasn't a thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's how young paleontology was at the time. Right, exactly. The, as as we said before in our videos, the term dinosaur was 17 years old when Darwin published Origin of Species. Yes. 17 years old, right? Um, uh, uh, oh, crap. Drawing a blank. Frick, what's his name? Uh, Owen. Oh. Owen, there you go. Owen had only coined it, yeah, just a few years before Darwin wrote Origin of Species. So, yeah, these concepts that we take for granted, that all of us alive take for granted, were very new <laughs> when Darwin wrote Origin of Species. But it's all uh, evidence of how active yeah. Satan was at that time through of science. Course. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Of course. Right now, we're right now paleontologists at right the benefit of having the uh, uh, the like, paleo maps. I don't know what, what term they use, but they, they know where the, which what each like where the the strata are and how, how they are uh, aged, and then they can just they, they know where to look for for fossils at the, of a certain age and a certain. Right. Uh, uh, environment, so they they have much, maybe much more knowledge now than they than they were then. So it's not surprising that they didn't have and as much fossils as we have now. And and the rate right. of discovery is also very different as as now it is now. Yeah, uh, MP Life apologist says, isn't chalk a bunch of fossils? Yes, chalk is uh, predominantly phytoplankton, but can also contain lots of other things like bivalves and gastropods, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but but for a long time. The idea of of um of of uh like why are there these organisms in certain places like uh, or marine fossils like up where it's not marine anymore is mostly due to rising and falling sea levels, mm -hmm. and it's not to say that like they didn't think mountains would rise and fall they did, and that's why they were like um there were like sea creatures or the fossils of sea creatures on mountains, but that's because the mountains yeah. would rise and fall. Not that the it's plates a, were crashing into each other and driving mountain formation. I, I think that's one of the one of the early discoveries of Dar like Darwin. Uh, yeah, with, the, with, with his went volcanic to, uh, so, Yeah, when he went to South America, he, he found uh, sea sea fossils on the mountains yes. in the Andes. Right, uh, Jefferson, yeah. you were saying something. Oh no, no, I was. I didn't. Oh, I thought you said something. Okay, uh, yeah, probably heard the background noise. Sorry. But yeah, you're right. Uh, Nestle, you're right. Like, uh, it's really funny because Darwin actually figured out how coral reefs form and how like 
volcanic mm-hmm. or, or oceanic islands form way before plate tectonics was around like not even before plate tectonics before alfred wegner first proposed plate tectonics it was before that back in like the 18 yeah. what 30s wasn't it so yeah which is pretty cool um did, did, did we already make a video on darwin's lesser known discoveries or oh, maybe, I, think maybe it's a good idea. Hmm? I think we did do that yeah <laughs> Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. Moving on. Yep. ...be found in the future, this was basically a scientific theory of the gaps, which did nothing to explain the known evidence as it presents itself to us. Instead, it explained away the absence of paleontological... Sorry, can I just say no. how annoyed I am with putting up a stupid picture like that? If you want to, okay. at <laughs> least, if you want to seem intelligent, don't do that because that just makes the whole thing look ridiculous you you mentioned it didn't close the gap and then you have this weird guy laughing at the screen and there's nothing funny being said and i find that really annoying sorry he's he's owning this he's owning the scientists yeah he's owning the yeah ev- that's the LMAO. the evolutionists yeah like yeah. Oh, you crazy evolutionists and your satanic tendencies <laughs> you, you can get this if you just get the holy spirit and get smart <laughs> v- yes very true if only we would be infused with the spirit uh i do want you, to point out you can do math and yep it's oh, cool. oh according no, to, according math. to np life <laughs> apologist the spirit was made by god everything else was made by the devil so at least oh, go. God made uh, it. That sounds like that sounds like one of my crazy relatives would have said years ago, back when back when we were in st- still in churches. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> he said, uh, "Is it true that every rock on the surface of the Earth has been to the core and back four times?" I don't think so. I don't think that's true because we still have Precambrian no. rocks on the surface, so they would have been like melted if that were the case. So I don't think that's possible. I'm, I'm... Like, like not not every single rock gets subducted. It's not right. It's not that like, like a t- turnover in the mantle is not that extensive. It's a, right. so, some stuff stays on the surface for a long time. That's literally what you just said. Is it true that every rock on the surface of Earth has been to the core and back four times? The answer is no. Mm-hmm. That is your claim. That's what you wrote, my dude. Um. Anyway, yeah, but he um, uh, right after oh, that maybe, he maybe said, was, "I can't, I can't hard. remember who maybe said that." Awesome. I can't. He said, "He said I can't remember who said that." Well, okay, okay, so well, whatever. I, I don't know who said it either, but uh, no, I don't. That's not true. Okay. Anyway, I, 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 I still um, would, I still would want to know. NP life apologist is that? Does that stand for no particular life apologist? No, he said there was no problem. No problem. He said it last time it was no problem. Yeah, no problem. You know, NP, no problem. No problem. I think um, if I think fossils, if you're an apologist, you got lots of problems. But that's just my point of view. Uh, the other thing about the fossils is th- this: Darwin was not making an argument from silence because he had a bunch of fossils already that mm-hmm. he was like these seem indicative of evolution, like mm-hmm. Megatherium and Glyptodon. He was like these are similar to modern organisms, but not quite. They're, they're, or they're, yeah, they are similar, but they're not the same. And also, um, the, and also the relatives are in the vicinity for some right. reason. Hmm. Uh, right. And same paleo, with, pa- paleo uh, biogeography. Hmm. Right. Uh, and same hmm. with like, he had fossils of a, uh, like, Halotherium, which was an early um, Serenian, a fossil of uh, Basilosaurus, or it was called Zuglodon at the time, which is an early whale. It has, still has hind limbs, very small hind limbs, but hind limbs nonetheless. Um, an Archaeopteryx, which you know was found just two years after the first edition of Origin was published. He had a bunch right. of fossils, so he was like, "I'm confident that given what we already have, we will continue to find more in the future." Yeah. And he's right. And also, he also he also made the prediction that uh, the, the early human ancestors would have been found in Africa. Yep. And pray tell, where are our, most of our ancient relatives found nowadays? Yep. Right. In Africa. Right. Exactly right. Bishop Larry Gator's quote came from comprehending the state of the human condition. Okay. Is he the um, one that said that uh, the spirit's made by God and everything else by Satan? 
No, I think he said that the rocks have no, been no, no, that, that, back four times. No, that was that he said that as well. Oh, uh, about the the spirit thing? Yeah. I don't I know. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. Alrighty, moving on. More reasons to not trust the bishop. Evidence for Darwinian evolution. Be that as it may, this theory didn't survive for very long anyway. In the 1940s, oil companies got into oh, offshore the drilling artifact hypothesis. and started I'm to sorry. work their way through miles of seafloor sediments. However, okay, as wait. geologists yeah. examined the drill cores, the supposed Precambrian fossils were nowhere to be found. And so the fate of the artifact hypothesis was sealed. In response to its initial defeat, okay, so the artifact hypothesis... Okay, that's not, and nor ever has been what the artifact hypothesis was for Precambrian organisms. The artifact hypothesis, which is actually still considered valid to an extent, um, not in its entirety, but it does have some merit, uh, as we'll talk about. I'm sure we'll talk about it more later, but I'll, I'll just give you sort of the outline of it. Um, is the Precambrian, or a lot of Precambrian organisms are not preserved in the fossil record because they're too small and too squishy right and so their fossil or if they made fossils at all they were you know so tiny or so easily breakable or what have you that they just simply haven't survived to today okay um well what were most of the organisms before the cambrian small squishy things even during, we'll, even during the cambrian also during the cambrian yeah they were small squishy yeah. things the the fossils the, the organisms which have the most fossils are hard things, like phytoplankton, which have these um, these little shells uh, mm -hmm. that are called tests. And those, as well as things like squid, like the, the squid shells, like uh, Bellum Knights had, those are the sorts of fossils, and also clams and things like that, yeah. that are by, by, uh, by far and ahead more um numerous than like anything else in the fossil record literally anything else because there's lots of them so they have um uh, uh they they have um lots of offspring and these offspring have hard parts so they're easy to get fossilized well by contrast there are fewer um vertebrates which have hard parts but they're not like entirely hard like phytoplankton are stuff like that well when they the shell is uh and so there are fewer of them there's also they have fewer offspring so there's less likely chance that they would get fossilized mm -hmm. and then fewer than that are the like soft-bodied animals where you have to have amazing uh preservation to find like jellyfish and tenophores right. and rotifers and things like that you're not gonna find you need these to... things go ahead you need to you need to have uh, a larger start in deposits to uh to have uh, yeah. a high chance of finding uh, these soft body forms and it's also like it's if you compare uh cambrian fo like fossil fossil de deposits uh uh from those that are larger staten and those that are not the larger staten mm -hmm. like you, there, there is like almost no oh uh, there's an overlap like you you can see the heart uh the the heart uh, uh, mineralized uh, animals in both mm -hmm. but only the uh, larger statin has the, uh, the the soft bodied ones, so there's a, there's a huge difference between the two. And I'd be curious. I think that like almost all of the Cambrian deposits are larger statin, right? Mm. Or the ones that have fossils, I should say. F famous ones, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, 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 the most most fossils that we have from the Cambrian are from larger statin. <laughs> yeah, almost I all think, of them, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, like the the Chengjing, yeah. the Burgess yeah. Shale. Um, the Mao Tian Chen, um, what else is there? Uh, I'm drawing blanks, but anyways, but yeah, yep. those are all Lagerstatten. They're not the, you're the odds of finding like a three centimeter like worm in a normal <laughs> deposit, very, very low, <laughs> you know. Uh, so anyway, yeah, very, very unlikely. Um, so the artifact hypothesis does have merit in the sense that like. We know organisms that are soft bodied are less likely to get fossilized. And when we look at the fossil record, that's exactly what we see. And so to just be like, oh, the artifact hypothesis is gone, which in fairness, he gave a completely incorrect account of what the artifact hypothesis is. And then said it's debunked like what? No, it's not actually. This is why when in uh, 
on Twitter like a week or so ago, maybe it was a couple of weeks, I posed the question, if the fossil record is a literal account of Earth's history, did flatworms get created in the Jurassic? If you take the fossil record literally, you have to answer yes. And the funny thing is, no intelligent design advocates will take that position. Wonder why. Hmm. Anyway. Also, right, I, I, I want to note oh, that um, RJ put in the side chat, uh, Gators doesn't come up in the tip data field, so hard to assess how prominent he is. If he doesn't come up in the tip data field, he's not prominent. I I yeah. I think I think I, it's fair to say that if RJ oh, hasn't true. heard of him, then he's an absolute nobody. Yeah, it's probably true. Hey. Okay, continue. Anyway, yep, yep. This was then adapted to propose that the intermediate animal forms of the Precambrian, which supposedly led to the Cambrian animals must have been too small or too soft or both to have been preserved. Okay. However, this is the artifact the 19th... hypothesis. At least you got I was that... saying, this is the actual artifact hypothesis. Yeah, you got that part right. Yeah, but the first I'm... part, the preamble was just like, I don't know what he was talking about. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm, right, I'm, loving, I'm loving every yeah. single pause, by the way. But that might be... <laughs> Continue. Okay. 80s spectacular paleontological finds at the site in China called the Maoshen Shan Shales were unearthed from Precambrian sediments. They revealed a wide range of soft-bodied animals which were preserved with astonishing um, accuracy. Besides hold on, discovering I thought fossilized. The Mao Tian Shen was Cambrian. Am I wrong? I thought it was Cambrian. Uh, I thought the like Shan Can you go back? Oh, what did he say? Uh... He said the the hold on, let me look it up. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I thought the much. Uh, I don't. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. Anyways, shale. Oh my gosh! Like oh my goodness! I cannot. Yeah, sure. Why not? It is Cambrian. It's early Cambrian. I think he meant to say Duchantuo. Yeah, right. I was, yeah, he I was, meant to I was say... thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, the Mountian Shen Shale is Cambrian stage three. That's what I thought. So it's about the same oh. age, slightly or slightly older than the um, the Burgess Shale. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. Al but al also, also, in, even if you could cut him some slack and say, assumed he is referring to the Duchanto formation. The yeah. Duchanto formation actually cannot cheat because it's a fo it's phosphatized. So it's basically yes. these soft-bodied animals are artificially mineralized by phosphate by, by, by being turned to phosphate basically that's how they're right. preserved and that's um and that, that only happens if i remember correctly that only happens with organisms on the order of like a couple centimeters right right yeah it, and so with also the duchantuo shale it has also been um a bit of a, a thorn in the side of intelligent design proponents because they have been so there's been a lot of debate. Um, I think it was like Shao et al. Or however you pronounce his name. X-I-A-O. Um, they proposed back in like it was the 80s or 90s, whatever it was, um, that these like they found these little things, which they were like, are these embryos of early animals? Um, and then other researchers were like, well, maybe they are or maybe they're protists or maybe they're back. They're giant bacteria like Thio Margarita. And there's been this huge back and forth debate. Well, recently, as in like, uh, I think two years ago, actually, um, there were some scans done of the supposed embryos, the alleged embryos. And it turns out, in fact, that at least some of them are developmentally complex enough to be animals. So they're animals mm -hmm. in the Precambrian, in like the early Ediacaran. So, and I, 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 even before, I think it's also before, like, uh, when you have the famous... Uh... Uh, Ediacara fauna, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, it's before the Ediacara Hills uh, fauna. Yeah. So it's actually like the earliest, uh, well, it's the earliest like animal body fossils. If I, yeah, like, it's up there, like with the Avalon explosion. And so you yeah. kind of have to wonder. Yeah, the, like, the, the only early signs of animals are like uh, the uh, chemical uh, signs, like uh, oh, like the sponge sterines. Yeah. sterines, yeah. And so you kind of have to wonder because how. If, if we're like 
we're thinking about this scientifically. How does that fit in with the intelligent design narrative? Because they don't really tell you. And there's a reason for that is they don't have a model. When you point out, when they say like, oh yes, the Duchanto shale has actual animals in it. Like, okay, cool. Or it has embryos. And then it's like, okay, well, these are animals that precede the later, more complex animals. So are you saying that animals were actually around like 50 million years before the Cambrian explosion? And you don't really get an, ex an explanation on that. They don't really want to talk about it. They want to, they only want to use it as a, a like a cudgel against the artifact hypothesis, but they don't want to incorporate it, what it actually means for their worldview into oh, oh, a model. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have this very rare and very specific way of how these uh, tiny animals got, got preserved. And that, that defeats the uh, artifact. No, it doesn't. It, it actually confirms the artifact hypothesis. Right. It shows you, that you need very highly peculiar conditions to have this preservation. Right, exactly. Yeah, so they do, So for one, it, it, does not, it doesn't affect the artifact hypothesis. And two, they don't actually incorporate it into their own model, into what they actually think happened. But anyway... All right, we can continue. Spectacular paleontological finds at the site in China called the Mao Shen Shan Shales were unearthed from Precambrian sediments. Okay. They reveal a wide range of soft-bodied animals which were preserved with astonishing accuracy. Besides discovering fossilized jellyfish or stomachs, digestive glands and nerve rings of various animals, paleontologists also found fossilized sponges. Now, you need to understand the that the anatomical structure the of Cambrian. sponges is extremely delicate, which is why they have been called nature's glasswork. Still, there is more. That's all because paleontologists didn't just discover sponge organisms Hold on a second. themselves in China. Hold on. Uh, that only refers to the glass sponges, which are the hexactinolita. That doesn't refer to most porphyrins. Like, the demo sponges are not glass sponges. Mm -hmm. They have spicules, but they're not, like... They don't have that that um, glassy substance to the same extent. So no, if I had like a little water bottle, I'd spray them. But no. <laughs> anyway, all right, continue. Sorry, nitpick. I'm I'm just enjoying the pause a little. Okay, I'll continue. <laughs> But they were even able to identify sponge embryos in their early stage of cell division. Not only that, but these sponges Wait, were second. preserved with such. No, he's confusing the Duchantuo shale with the Mao Xiaoshan shale. He's confusing these two because the jellyfish and sponges the, the, and all those fossils from the Mao, Chao, Mao Xiaoshan shale are Cambrian. But the embryo fossils are from a different Chinese yeah. stratum from earlier. He's confusing these two. By about uh, five, 50 million years or more or something? Yeah, I don't know. it's like, <laughs> what, what is happening? No, the spritz again, you know, <laughs> the water bottle. Now he just looks constipated. <laughs> the fact that you can say that, Mao Shao Shan Shale, say that 10 times in Mao a row. Shen. I, I'm, I am terrible with pronunciations. At work, people are like, how do, what's seashells, the, how do you pronounce the, the seashore? Right. Yeah. Work people are like, how do you pronounce the Latin? I'm like, I don't know. I never took a class in Latin. I don't know how it's pronounced. Anyway. Still having fun with the pauses. Fidelity that biologists could even identify the nuclei of fossilized embryonic sponge cells. What all of this means is that sedimentary rocks of the Precambrian were, in fact, perfectly capable of preserving the most delicate organisms. Phosphatized. The Darwinist they argument were that the ancestors of the Cambrian animals must have existed but cannot be recovered due to their softness and smallness is therefore not plausible. That's why okay, another I have hypothesis a was... Well, I have a question. <laughs> if, think about how, how many bacterial species are on the planet. Just or not even that. Just think of how many like in sheer volume bacteria are on the earth at any given time. Mm -hmm. Why is it then that we have such few bacteria fossils? Why is that? Do we want to pause and think about it for a moment? Or so few protist mm -hmm. fossils? Why are the protist fossils that we have ones that had shells? We want to pause to wonder about that a moment. No. 
No, we're just going to keep going like it doesn't matter. Okay. If if you All say right. pause, if you say pause one more time, I'm going to point out he's giving you the look right now. He is giving me the look. He's giving me the, the eye. I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose. This is just how it happens. And now I, that's on my mind. Sorry. Peter, did, I mean, I, I, my brain went, I think, in the direction that yours usually does when he said something about the thing thing not being able to recover because it was too soft and too small. And honestly, yeah. it, yes. <laughs> it is generally hard for something to recover when it's soft and small. Oh, if, oh if, no. if, if you're going to talk about that, then you have to watch uh, uh, Natalia Reagan, one of her last videos. It's about the, the clitoris of the gibbon, which is extremely big. And she did an entire comedy <laughs> bit about the clitoris of the of the gibbon. Just would it, anyone would who, it be something to the effect of like at least for gibbons, the males know how to find it? Yes, <laughs> those wouldn't have a now, problem. Now we are definitely demonetized. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what what she would do if she had one of those because she talks about that as well. If you haven't subscribed to oh, Natalia boy. Reagan. She's a science communicator. You need to go watch her. That's if anything, you need to go watch her. This is yeah. taking science communication to a whole new level. I'm just saying. Yeah. And this is the woman oh. who who tried to have sex with Earl Hickey in My Name Is Earl. So if that's yeah. not enough to uh. subscribe, I don't know what is. Also, RJ points out phosphatization physically cannot preserve an embryo above half a centimeter, as I recall. Of course, Meyer, etc., never noted that, so neither does he. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Meyer didn't say it because he doesn't care. Uh, yeah. Deflate just doesn't know it because he's an apologist. So you know, that's, that's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate because, like, what 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 was what, what exactly was around during the uh, the Shanto uh, era? Uh, yeah. To to uh, I, of course it's not called the era, but let's just uh, say it was an era in an that era. time like, period. Yeah, in that in the time period, like what, like uh, what type of uh, types of animals were there around? Yeah, we, like we can like it's, it's a very uh, very difficult to tell uh, for, just from these embryos. Like they, we know that there at least some of them are animals, but were they like more like the uh, the the fawns of Charnia maybe, or maybe they, they were right. all sponges or something? Like we don't we don't know. Right, were they, yeah, were they Nidarians or like Placozoans or, you know, something relatively simple, some like basal Eumetazoan or something like that. The uh, the funny go. thing is, Meyer actually says in Darwin's Doubt, he's fine with everything from like sponges to Nidarians being in the Precambrian. But then Gunter Beckley came along and is like, no, 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 no. Nope. We're not going to talk about animals in the Precambrian at all. We're going to try to make the Precambrian <laughs> look as explosive as possible. And he does this really they, funny kind of dodge. What yeah, you say? They are, they are too transitional in the, right. the Precambrian. <laughs> Beckley does this really interesting dodge where he like argues tooth and nail that things like Charnia and Dickinsonia are not animals. And then when he does bring up animals, he's like, yeah, but it doesn't really matter. So if he, he like wrote an article about Kimberell and he's like, yeah, you know, maybe it's a stem spiralian, but ah, we don't really know. So it doesn't matter. And then for like, Yelingia, which is a segmented worm, either an annelid or a panarthropod. He didn't even write the article on it. It's anonymously authored. So it's like, nothing's an animal unless it is, in which case I don't care. That's his argument. I, I, either, it's, either it is not transitional or it is too transitional. Yeah. But that's... Jackson, Jackson <laughs> I, have to, I have to ask. You're not literally asking young earth creationists to be consistent, right? I mean... I know. Shame it's, on me. Yeah, it's. I think. I think we all know that that's never going to happen. Well, I'm also. Um, I'm reading some Beckley stuff right now, and he says, uh, like, intelligent design advocates don't have a problem with uh, transitional fossils. When when evolutionists say transitional fossils, they mean like anatomical intermediates. But when we say transitional fossil, we mean direct ancestor to dependent sequences. Oh, and wow. it's like it's like oh, well, first, wow. first of all, that that second category is contained within the first category. Right. right. 
But also, you want only a super specific subset of all the transitional fossils, and that's all you'll accept. Like, it doesn't matter we have all these which meet the criteria of transitional. You don't care unless we can, in effect, demonstrate that they are like species to species transitions. That's all he cares about. And it's it's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. So whatever. I I, I need to address something that is been said in chat. Uh okay. NP, NP Life Apologist said, You atheists, that's probably us, have been bashing creationism for years now. It's time you bash the Satanists, debate them, ask them why and <laughs> do they get results from spirit cooking. Okay, so I do Two shows a week, minimum, <laughs> with a Satanist. Uh, he doesn't like spirits. He is a beer drinker. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about Arn Ra. And so oh he's God. a Satanist, which is a secular organization trying to counter the damage that Christianity is doing in the United States. So... Yeah. That's why we don't debate them because they're on our side. And they don't believe in Satan. Yeah. None of them, right. at least that's the big from, point. From the Satanic Temple, those people do not believe in Satan. This is a secular organization and it was it was uh started because of uh what the Christians are doing to education to um uh, violating uh the the uh separation of church and state so if you can put up the ten commandments in in a uh, a government building then obviously the satanic temple wants a statue of baphomet there as well which pretty much right. takes care of having the ten commandments put up because suddenly they don't want to anymore no. <laughs> yeah it's it's you're right it's it's all about um uh, yeah showing the hypocrisy of our government surrounding religion um yeah most of them just don't believe in satan or god or anything supernatural most of them are atheists um maybe if like a handful of them do actually believe satan exists but i, I don't they're they're so there's so few of them that i've like never actually run into them if i'm honest Spooky, um, Spooky Bear yeah, says, I'm Santa. Stick around until the end of the video, Spooky. I have a, I have a tale to tell about that. <laughs> but we'll do All that right, at anyway. the end. We, I, th I think we need to move on, otherwise yeah. Yeah. We, we go, we, yeah, we're going nowhere. <clears throat> ...proposed one that took a radically different approach by claiming that the Precambrian ancestors to the Cambrian animals are actually there in the fossil record, in front of that our very Cambrian eyes, fossil. so to speak. This hypothesis refers to fossils of what is called the Vendian fauna, or the Ediacaran fauna, or the fauna of yeah. the Ediacaran era. The geological yep. era of the Ediacaran is situated within the Precambrian era, forming that its last true. part, in fact, at the very interface mm -hmm. to the Cambrian era in which the sudden explosion of animal forms takes place. The name of this yep. geological era derives from the Ediacaran Hills in southeastern Australia, where the yep. most significant find of fossils from this time was made. Ediacaran fossils can be put into four different categories. First, the sponges, which we've just mentioned a minute ago. Second, okay. fossils that represent a primitive form of mollusks. Mollusks okay. are invertebrate animals okay. that are partly or wholly enclosed in a shell. Mo none of the those were in the Precambrian. The Ediacaran that has been found is called Kimberella, a simple that animal is one form of them. that had a shell similar to that of limpets, one that was strong though not hard. Oh, 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 Kimberella oh, 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 oh. crept along. I right, pause. pause. Did, it say, did it say that Kimberella had a shell? I don't think Kimbrella had a shell. I think it had a soft but non-mineralized mm. shell. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, um, yeah. Also, I do want to point out, NP Lifeologist says, why don't you debate the Scientologists? Also, okay, that's another point where, like, the majority of Scientologists don't know, either don't know or don't believe the Xenu thing. Like, they just don't know about it. And the few who do, like, don't do debates. They just kind of sit in their, their towers and away from the the people and they'll sue you if you try to make a documentary showing why they're yeah. harmful and wrong 
So, famously, yeah. famously, yeah. the so, father of the the current leader of uh, Scientology, uh, Miscavige, sadly passed away a few months ago. I was I was trying to uh, set up a date and time to have him uh, on my channel. Uh, he tried to do that. He walked away and uh, tried calling them out. They don't do debates. Mm. They don't engage with non-believers whatsoever. Um, yeah. And there's probably a no, reason totally for that. Fair. Probably a reason for that, because <laughs> if you get to a yeah. certain stage uh, in Scientology, you can no longer get cancer. Guess who passed away from cancer quite recently? <laughs> yeah. Very famous. Play she stupid was games, second win stupid prizes. Second actress passing away from cancer. Both at stage eight, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Beatons don't also, help. Also, he, I, also, he he says that uh, uh, creationism is less of a threat than Scientology. I like, I'm not sure. Like, like a, I, I think I think creationism is more of that because uh, mainly because it's it's more prevalent. Like Scientology yes. is mostly very uh, small. One of yeah, the of course, one still, of the of things course, still, dam still damaging, but yeah. One of the things that made me start my channel is that you can have a child being born in a young Earth creationist family that would have the intelligence to come up with the cure for cancer and never will because of the poor education they get nine out of ten times being homeschooled and being told to not get a. Uh, uh, further education because degree. yeah because universities will turn you into atheists yes it's a right. threat and it's not only a threat to that particular child it's a threat to humanity because we don't know how many brilliant scientists we've already lost to the young earth creationist movement yeah, I, I think like i think also like uh D dawkins uh uh at one point he talks about like uh, the scientist Kurt Weiss who retold the story mm. about like yeah. uh he, he, he was going through the bible and cutting out everything he saw as incompatible with science and he saw that uh, oh most of the bible is cut out so what he decided was oh the bible all the bible is right and uh, he abandoned science and mm -hmm. that's uh an right. np that's apologist right. says right. objection speculation so apparently you don't think that young earth creationists are intelligent enough nah, you might have a point there as well, well. and okay and, so Our guys getting mad my, at us again. So my assessment of like of harm uh, as a whole is based on things like one, yeah, do they accept or reject like the scientific consensus, and not just on evolution, but like yeah. on climate change? Because mm -hmm. let's, vaccines, let's yeah. right, and vaccines. Because let's be real, um, it, your daily life, unless you're an evolutionary <laughs> he, biologist. Yes. What, what, what when I said for vaccines, he mentions Fauci. <laughs> Yeah. Was Fauci what? I don't. I don't know. Um. I don't think so. Is what, it, when I it comes to anyway, when it so comes to climate change, they're, they're even worse because they want this okay, to happen the, because that is a sign of the end times. Right. It brings the second coming. Yes. Right. Okay. So the yeah. Right. And that's the thing because if if they are opposed to the scientific consensus and the consensus says we are harming our planet, then and they are saying yeah, it's a great idea. Let's continue doing that. That's bad that is more harmful than xenu imbued humans with a spirit one of these ideas is way more harmful than the other now yeah. if fauci was a creation i don't care i i have no idea but i don't care um yeah I, I didn't think he was <laughs> but like um ken miller is a christian and um francis collins all these guys are christians not young earth creationists obviously but like obviously their christianity has no impact on their on the science that they do they do perfectly good science um but the problem is yeah the problem is creationism the problem is not uh, christian also like, I, I view creationism less as a uh a religious thing and more of a political and an and, and anti-science thing yes i right. i forgot his first name but bacher is a pentecostal priest robert bacher robert bacher yeah. paleontologist he's a yeah. pentecostal priest so, right? or pastor whatever you want to call it yeah i don't I don't know what the correct term is but but yeah you're right 
Shall we start the video? I because we, he, he, I think, I think he we looks are getting really more... angry right now. Yeah, let's let's get back to the video. <laughs> I think we are, I can, we are getting distracted by the comment. Uh, so, uh, I'm curious to hear what the video. four categories are. I, I really want to know. All right, mm -hmm. let's go. Let's get back to it. Seafloor. Third, so-called trace fossils, which aren't fossilized animals, but rather fossilized remains that are believed to go back to animal activity. Typical trace fossils four. are, for example, barrows, tracks, or fecal pellets attributed to ancient types of worms. The fourth group okay. is made up of the distinctive fossils that were specifically found in the Australian okay, hills and which pause. gave this. Okay, this is this is a list. <laughs> this is a this is a it hot is. take. This is a hot <laughs> take on the Ediacaran fossils. Is what this is. Um, okay, actually, I, th I, I think, think it's brilliant here. that it's a list of well, Ediacaran fossils. On. And then the last yeah. one on the list is Ediacaran fossils. fossils. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's Ediacaran fossils. And guess what? Drum roll. Ediacaran fossils made the list. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, from, from Australia. Yeah, specifically. Yeah. From yeah. Australia. Right. Forget the Ediacaran fossils in like, um, in uh, like Canada or Russia. <laughs> Forget those. The like the white sea deposits or you know the nama deposits or anything like that no forget those those aren't real <laughs> those are made up the, the, the avalon is from australia right the avalon <laughs> right yeah the avalon is, yeah. is australia jesus christ <sighs> anyways um okay so actually as of right now i'm not aware of any confirmed sponge body fossils from the ediacaran there are some maybes uh there's like the best candidate body fossil right now is eosyatha spongia which is According to the paper, sponge grade, not necessarily a sponge. Um, and even then, they're not quite sure if it is actually a sponge. Um, but I say that's a good... It's They seem to be okay with it. And even the papers I've seen which criticize that one are like, yeah, it's spongy. Spongy. So maybe. So maybe Eosai at the spongy is a sponge. Okay. The, the oldest animal potential animal fossils are sponge sterains which after a lot of back and forth seem to be vindicated at least for now they do actually seem to be sponge sterains um because they have particular ratios of sterains in those fossils in those those rocks in in oman which are only consistent with sponges like they have a like methyl stigma stain and these other um different uh molecules which like are only known from sponges there was some debate early on that maybe they were made by protists or some algae, but they're not in the correct ratios to have been made by protists or algae. It's, again, ratios that are only consistent with sponges. Now you can say, well, we don't know that there's some, uh, you know, maybe there was some algae or something like that in the Precambrian which made these molecules. Well, sure, maybe, but that's a negative argument. So as of right now, these seem to be sponge molecules so okay right. primitive mollusks yeah he mentioned kimberella which okay yeah what's the problem Maybe. with kimberella it is actually a it's either a, a stem mollusk or it's a stem spiralian either way it's a bilaterian it's definitely mm -hmm. an animal and it's pretty much definitely a bilaterian so okay uh trace fossils there are lots of different trace fossils um in the in the Ediacara and like a lot of worms um there are some like I, oh actually, I, I was I was wrong about the Avalon it's from the Ca Canada I think the Avalon uh, I, oh, I thought you were making a joke yeah no Ca uh, Avalon's uh, yeah. from Canada yeah from uh, <laughs> well isn't that what it's called it's like it's Avalon Point or something like that isn't it yeah um and then the the so yeah I think mostly trace fossils are like worms but they're like they're they're um the the first the very top of the sediment so the ediacaran like whatever they were didn't burrow the very first burrowing fossils are actually what defines the cambrian boundary and that's trip trip tick this pedum which is oh, a, it's, a, a, it's more specific, specifically the like how de deep they burrow like there were some right um wormy things as like uh made horizontal tunnels a bit but not right. very deep not yeah. vertical right they didn't go vertical yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, so Treptichnus pedum is a preapulid, uh, so it's one of the penis worms. Um, and so that's... Yeah. Yes, the penis worm. So there's a phylum of worms which are related <laughs> to the arthropods. They're called the preapulids, the penis worms. And it's because huh. 
they look like penises. I, I figured it was because they've resembled them. I, I, yeah. <laughs> either that or they're just, you know, really, you know, they have terrible personalities. So they're like, yeah, those things are dicks. <laughs> Jefferson, yeah. So Jefferson, I'm, up, I'm, I'm rubbing off I'll on you. I'll put it in the side chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that... Lita, they go, look that guy up, or those guys, that's a whole phylum of worms. Um, so yeah. Uh, so trace fossils. So, okay. And then Ediacaran fossils from Australia, as we said. So apparently the Avalon fossils from Canada don't exist. The White Sea assemblage from, from Siberia doesn't exist. It's just the ones <laughs> from, from, uh, from Australia. So what this, what this list fails to take into account is like all the fossils that don't fall into these categories. Like yeah. and, uh, uh, Charnia. And they also, and they also lump Sony. in like many, many, many distinct fossils like uh, the... Uh... There's Pregina fossils and the Jarnia fossils and a bit uh, the, right. the, the, think... Dicoso the Dicosonia type fossils also. Yeah. Maybe that's what he means by the Vendian biota, but we know what these things are now. And by the time he made this video, like either this year or last year. And so as of this point, we have a pretty good idea and we have for at least for Dickinsonia for several years, mm -hmm. had a pretty good idea of what it is. Dickinsonia is a very early bilaterian. So it's a very early member of the group that includes all the bilaterally symmetrical animals. You know, worms, bugs, fish, us, we're all in that group. Interestingly, starfish, even though they're... The funny thing about starfish is they are their larvae are bilaterally symmetrical, then they become radially symmetric. But there's a group of sand dollars, which are, like all uh, echinoderms, bilaterally symmetrical at birth, then they went through a phase in their evolution, they're called the Rotulidae, where they were radially symmetric, and then they evolved bilateral symmetry again as an adult in their adult phase. Which is bonkers, in my opinion, but whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, the Ediacaran fossils are, are stem members of these groups. Charnia is like a, is a eumetazoan, or a stem eumetazoan. Dickinsonia, Spergina... Yeah. These are stem bilaterians. Um, what else is there? Nomicalathus is a is like a stem um, uh, lophophorate. So that's the group that includes brachiopods and and uh, bryozoans. Um, these guys are very ancient members of these groups that we're from, more familiar with, and it makes sense, of course, that they're appearing before the members we're more familiar with. They appear before that. So this list is very weird. And also, just let's take it for granted for a moment. Let's just say this is it. So you're acknowledging that animals were around, primitive animals, and very simple animals prior to the Cambrian, right? That's what he's mm -hmm. acknowledging here. He's saying, yeah, worms were around, primitive mollusks were around, sponges. The very things we expect before we find advanced mollusks and, like, you know, and bilat and uh, or chordates Arth arthropods, and, yeah. and arthropods. Yeah, it's like that's okay. This is exactly what we expect. What do you want? Maybe he'll tell us. Anyway, well, let's find out. Let's find out. Yeah, yeah let's do it together. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to. I want to bring something up in the chat again. NP life apologist uh, just told uh, RJ to go watch a Roswell video, and he says, "Well, watch. I use my brain." I don't think so. Um, also, watch yeah. them for yourself and then judge. That's not how we do science. Science isn't a democracy. If you like this video, yeah. then that's true. No, that's not how it works. And RJ... I mean, in my case, it is. If you like my videos, then they're right. That's how that works. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's different. That's entirely different. But yeah. Yes, for my case, yeah. <laughs> No. RJ, else, no, it's different. RJ makes a good point and he says your brain bounces from one unsubstantiated thing to another 200 times zero is still zero and he's not not wrong so continue yeah yes sir well, yeah yes this era its name these are fossils of mostly soft-bodied organisms which are large enough to be seen with the naked eye the three most well-known forms are Dickinsonia Sprigina and Charnia the hypothesis we're now Two considering claims that taken all together, the Ediacaran fossils of these four categories finally solved the Darwinian problem of the Cambrian explosion. So let's check out how yeah. well this holds up. 
As far as the adiacrine sponges are concerned, they do indeed bear some resemblance to some of the sponges that appear in the Cambrian era. Similarly, Kimberella sure. can be seen as a precursor to certain Cambrian mollusks. However, it wow. must be pointed out that this relation is problematic for the following reason. While it is true that Kimberella did have strong body parts, it still lacked the hard shell made of calcium carbonate that is distinctive of the film of mollusks. The it's problem with like these fossils, besides uh, it, it them pause. not being fossils of... Pause. Um, if I remember correctly, um, the... the Actually, so not even all of um, not even all the the uh, bivalves and arthropods in the Cambrian had like calcium carbonate shells right. and stuff. They went through the the Cambrian's uh, oceanic chemistry changed. It was a period where it was like predominantly magnesium, uh, where, or where there was lots of magnesium that had worked its way into the shells of these organisms. So you can't just say it's it's not a mollusk because its shell isn't calcium carbonate. That's not how that works. Like no. No, spritz again. <laughs> it cannot be an intermediate mollusk because it, it lacks some features of mollusks. Oh, wait. It's too transitional. Yeah, too that's transitional. right. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Continue. Continuing on. Animals yep. in the first place is that some of them have actually been shown to represent mm -hmm. simple inorganic sedimentary structures or the traces of plant life rather than the result of animal activity. In addition, the dating of hold some on. of these trace fossils... Hold on a second. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Some Wait of them, a minute. but not all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. like, what the... F what? Do you think that paleontologists can't differentiate between a plant... Uh, uh, a trace fossil and an animal? Like, there are... <laughs> Do you think that, that like, um, plants left these winding burrows in the top of the sediment? Do you think that's how that works, my guy? And we, and we have, for, for, like, uh, right now, we have, like, the Yeningia, where we see the trace fossils ending up with a actual body fossil. And right. also, uh, what's the other fossil again? The, like, small bilateral unit? Oh, like, um, Icaria. Icaria, yeah, Icaria. Icaria, yeah. Right. Yeah. Which has the, the, the freaking trackways associated with it, like, what are you talking about? I mean, sure, it can be difficult to figure out if a you know what a trace fossil belonged to specifically, but it's it's not as difficult to tell whether it belonged to a plant or an animal. Like, what are you what? talking about? Anyway, you're you're definitely what making you? him angry. Just look. Well, he makes <laughs> me angry, so you know what? It's, 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 it's mutual. The, feel, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's them into the time period of 1.5 to 1.8 billion years ago, which is way before multicellular life even Hold existed on a second. in the first place. Wait oh, a minute. Go, 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 wait, go back, go back, go back. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. First of all, I'm not aware of this. Second of all, I'm not aware of any, any like, moving trace fossils that like look like worms that are dated to 1.5 billion years ago i I'm think not... i think i am familiar with you talk about and it's probably a like a, something like a uh uh a pro like a um an aggregate produce like uh dic oh, the... like something like that maybe so there are yeah. right so there are the aggregate protists and there are things there are actually forams called uh xenophyophores which make like really big shells which are really complicated and stuff um but again the oh <gasps> with with protist fossils there are rolling protists in the ocean like there are forams that roll along the bottom but their trace fossils are distinguishable from bilaterians they have very different fossils because one is uh just rolling along the top of the sediment and one is actually like burrowing horizontally through it like he's just kind of lumping them all together like oh there are trace fossils and some of them go back to 1.5 billion years ago which is way before animals were around just what the heck my goodness. Also, there are no forams known from the uh, Precambrian presently. I think they're known from like the the Mesozoic is when the first ones show up. If I remember correctly. Anyway. Yeah, Jackson, I think we have the dumbest comment in the side chat that you've ever had. What? So NP Life Apologist said, 
uh, he needs a university paper to read and get talked at so he can get a sheet of paper. No, no, a scientific paper is not a kind of paper. It is what is written on the paper that makes it a scientific paper. It's not just a sheet of paper. There's... Yeah, so the point of a degree... I, 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 think, I think he's referring to a, a degree, that the paper, your, the, your degree... No, no, he said... I mean, if you he come said back and say sheet... something that's wrong, we're, yeah, we're gonna... He said that's a what he means. sheet of paper. The sheet of paper. paper is the degree. Yes. Yes, it's, that's the degree. It's, it's, it's not the it. sheet of paper. It's what's written well, on well, it. Well, okay, and it's but... probably I mean, more he, than he, one he sheet. the degree is just a... Yeah. Right, he he's just saying it's just a sheet, right. But the thing about it is... What uh, you get a degree because you <laughs> please don't spooky bed hair. Please don't accept the challenge. Um, you get this degree because you show proficiency in a field. If you come back, but that doesn't mean you're perfect, right? Uh, I have a bachelor's, but I get stuff wrong all the time. That's fine. We're human. If if I got a degree and then came back and just lied, then yes, you would have every right to scorn me because I'd be lying. That's that's the whole point. Right. Anyway, okay. And, moving on. And as for spooky bed hair, your dad is here. Don't you dare! You're not too old to get spanked. Oh. Nevertheless, for reasons I won't elaborate on here, based on an overly optimistic interpretation of the trace fossil evidence, one may grant that these traces might stem from two different types of animals. However. Even with this admission, it is still impossible what? to define most of the anatomical characteristics of the two animals. No, I'm becoming an alcoholic. This is the stream that turned me. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, he said for reasons that he won't go into right here. I think those are this the reasons that I really want to hear right now. I, because... I'm going to be an alcoholic. This is what happened. This is how it started right now. When you guys look back on this like 20 years later and I have like no job and stuff and I'm just a drunk, this is what turned me, right? <laughs> because he thinks there are two types of animals that made all of the different trace fossils in the Ediacaran. There are, if I remember correctly, there are at least... 10 different types of trace fossils in the Ediacaran, and he thinks they were made by two animals, two species. Are you kidding? Are you actually joking? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Help me, please. He's, he's, try, he's trying to educate people, Jackson. Yeah. He's just trying I feel de-educated right now. And, and I feel like I'm losing knowledge and, watching this. And he's giving you the look again. I mean, oh my god. Oh man. Well, he's okay. NP Life Fall just says maybe, or hey, atheists should listen to the enemy to know what they're up to. That's what we're doing. He, well, he's not yeah. really. What is it? Uh, take that Darwin said the other day. He said somebody said that he was like their, um, their arch nemesis. <laughs> and take that Darwin said, You're my arch nemesis in the sense that you're the guy at Taco Bell who forgot my nacho sauce. We, <laughs> we, we, we have, <laughs> that's what this is we're literally looking at the enemy you make videos about the enemy i talk to the enemy Nestle right. uh, helps you with your scripts uh combating yes. the enemy jefferson spatchcock uh for those who don't know has the worst job of all of us he reviews darth dawkins oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh lord so, uh, yeah, it's a little bit like yeah, it's a, it's like being a janitor. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe it. In in, um, all, in all fairness, if you haven't watched any of yeah. Jeff's shows, you need to go watch. Go subscribe and watch. They're brilliant. Just saying. Nice. I I also want to point out. Just I just want to be be totally fair here. None of these guys are my enemies. Um. The deflate is not my enemy. No, uh, Kent Hovind isn't. No creationist is because I don't give them the brain space to like occupy my head in that that regard. Mm -hmm. I have other more important things to think about. We we call um, them chew toys. Yes. The funny thing is, I know that Standing for Truth thinks about me because he talks about me in his live chats. Mm -hmm. Now I don't watch his videos, but I I am I have been told, and people have sent me the screenshots of him talking about me in his live chats where he knows I don't go. He knows I'm not seeing them unless 
you know, someone screenshots them, which it's, it's a really funny th- like feeling to know that someone is spending their time thinking about you and like wringing their hands about what you do, but you really don't <laughs> watch any of their material. So anyway, Deflate's just more interesting anyway. He has more and, interesting things. To say. And let's let's keep in mind, let's not forget that Standing for Truth writes books yes. with uh, another guy who used to be a breatharian. Oh, who gets who gets yeah. who, who gets his science <laughs> from a website that literally in the logo says that they don't care about truth. Let that sink in. I mean, what was are... it? Um, Nestle roasted standing one time. Um, I can't remember. What... Nestle said something. Or, or sorry, standing said something like, um. He tried to make fun of your name, but it like completely face planted. <laughs> so Nestle said, "No, that doesn't really work. Not like strangling the truth." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I, rem- I don't even remember that anymore. <laughs> it, I like uh, I I don't remember what video it was on, but it was in the comment section on something, and I I thought it was hilarious. I love that that exchange so. Oh, much. and and I don't we, even remember if he responded to you after that. <laughs> We, we we lost um, NP life apologist because apparently Kenty is live and he's got to go. Kent, oh no. I mean, Kent is live. Got to go. Yeah. yeah. Go, get, go, hide the go get you probably. the real science. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. Which are being granted in principle. So how about the fourth group, Dickinsonia, Sprigina, and Charnia? the most prominent representatives of the Ediacaran era, which were found in that key site in Australia. Could they plausibly serve as precursors to the Cambrian animals? The problem Directly? is that establishing a relationship between these three organisms and the Cambrian animals is virtually impossible. And here is why. Uh, Dickinsonia, uh, Spigina and Charnia have neither obvious head, mouth or gut, nor sense organs such as eyes. They don't even that have is a not body what... marked by bilateral symmetry. Yet the pause, animals pause, showing pause. up in the Cambrian. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, none of those characteristics are what are used by paleontologists to identify them as well to identify uh, Spurgina and Dickinsonia as stem bilaterians, and freaking Charnia is a umeta- is a stem eumetazoan. So of course it doesn't have bilateral symmetry. So of course it doesn't have like sense organs and a through gut. It's a freaking it's on the same level as like a placozoan, you know. It's no, of course it doesn't have those characteristics. Um, the arguments for it are the fact that are the way it builds its body, right? Um, it it has like fractal this fractal body plan, but the complexity and the size and the way it adds units is consistent only with how animals build their bodies, not with fungi or plants or anything else, right? It's this regular repeating. A body plan which has like multiple tissue types and is built regularly that's only consistent with animals for dickinsonia and spurgina it's sort of it's sort of the same uh not quite but they do have again more complex regular repeating bodies with what appear like multiple types of tissue they have this um <clears throat> they have this uh this this degree of complexity that doesn't that isn't consistent with any non-animals plus uh dickinsonia is associated with um certain cholesterols which are only known from animals it has it actually has trace fossils so it has like movement remains um i think there's something the ontogeny yeah so the development is also animal like so yeah so oh what'd you put in there with the trace Fossils, nestling. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I was I was looking up like uh, I I said previously that he I think I remember what he was talking about when he said about like the uh, two billion year old trace fossils. But I think oh, okay. he, he is referring to something like a slime mold or uh, yeah. stellum or something like that. Yeah. Well, very cool. I'll save that paper. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, so these things which identify, it's kind of funny, honestly, that the things which identify these guys as animals are none of the things that he said. He's like, why don't they have eyes? 
not all bilaterians have eyes. You know, why aren't they bilaterally symmetrical? Because none of them are true bilaterians? Like, what do you want? It's 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 kind of like saying if you, I don't know, if you come to like a murder scene or something and it's like, well, you know, where is the evidence that this guy wore this type of shoes? Well, he didn't wear those type of shoes because we don't have evidence for that. We have this other type. Well, since it wasn't this type of shoe, he couldn't have done Like, what? No. It's not how that works. Anyway. All right. I, I, I have to. I have to. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm watching the chat too much, but NP Life Apologist just okay. put in two abbreviations and then put in what the abbreviations mean because obviously I would have thought that GLHF would have meant go lie, holy fuck. Because <laughs> what? that's what I thought. But it seems Why to be think- good luck, have fun. Okay. Well, there we why, go. Why would you... Right. Never mind. Mine didn't make any sense. The first thing I went with was uh, get licked, have fuck. <laughs> that just didn't make sense. The, the, but I'm... then he put it in parentheses. He helped me, Peter. I mean, it helped me. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, like, my perverted brain would have just run with that and been like, huh, well, NP seems to be as degenerate as I am. You're, you're getting way too even, Dutch I don't think on I this, uh, what... Jefferson. I don't think I would have known what HS stood for at all. I wouldn't I have know. either. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Like HF. High fructose? I, I don't. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Back to the video. Explosion exhibit all of these pretty fundamental anatomical features. In addition, given the nature of those ediacaran organisms, scientists have had a very hard time settling on how to classify them moving them from one taxonomic class to the next and that back is true. again. But if these Until Precambrian now. organisms can't even be properly classified themselves, the argument that Which they serve you know. as the precursors to some Cambrian class okay, of animals can never... Pause. Just very briefly, Which yeah, they were moved around because we had... The technology wasn't as good as what we have today, and we didn't have as many fossils as we have today. But for the past, like, for Dickinsonia, it's been considered an animal since, like, 2010. Um, and also, like, a, a stem bilaterian at least as long as that. So, or, or, well, sometimes since then, it was also con- or has come to be considered a stem bilaterian. So, uh, okay. Um, I guess you're right. In the past, it was considered something different because we didn't have as many and the technology wasn't as good. But now we've changed you... our idea because the technology is better. Like, Wait, Jackson, okay, science are, progressed. Are, are you saying that science is a self-correcting mechanism to get to the truth? I might be saying I might be saying that. Oh, yes. who knew? He, he's definitely implying it heavily. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think deflate is catching on. Mm-hmm. Um, can I ask then, I mean, and, and this is because I'm scientifically kind of ignorant, but... No, don't worry about it. Go I, ahead. I want to track this as best I can from the original part. What precisely, like, I mean... Given the way he's sort of doing this, and, and maybe he's getting to, a, I, it doesn't feel like he's gotten to a point yet, other than just kind of like cherry pick things that seem like it's kind of, what's his issue? What what does he think the issue with this, the fossil record is in terms of like, what's the problem that okay. evolu- evolutionists, quote unquote, had to plug? Okay, so in essence, so what he's doing is he's relying on a book which was written in 2013 titled Darwin's Doubt. It was written by Stephen Meyer, who works at the Discovery Institute. Yeah, but I, so the, I'm aware of him, yeah. Okay, so the point of that book was arguing that the Cambrian uh, represent, which was a period from about 541 to 485 million years ago, is way too explosive um, in the origination of different clades of animals to be explicable under gradualistic evolution, because apparently 1850s evolution is the only kind that exists. So Meyer takes a whole bunch of of or well he sort of um quickly looks over the fossil record of ediacaran organisms and it does what deflate does he basically just kind of flips all them off he says ah we have this but eh, it doesn't really matter and then when he looks at the cambrian he says oh my goodness there are so many fossils way more than we should expect on evolution and we don't have a perfect transition for everything so therefore no evolution Right. Therefore, no evolution. And that's as far as they get, really, if we're honest. 
when you start asking, when you start probing them and asking, like, okay, so no evolution, all right, that's fine. What do you propose instead? That's when they start kind of like it's a it's a hide the ball game. Because if you ask them, if you start asking like um like legitimate questions, actually like what do you predict to see? They start getting really evasive. If you ask, for instance, um or freeze entirely. Yeah, or freeze entirely. If you if you ask, for instance, <laughs> like because we have fossils of Claudina, which is like a little wormy guy, at the at the terminal Ediacaran. And now fossils of Claudina extend into the earliest Cambrian. Like, they just kind of make it over the line a few million years. Well, if you were to ask them, okay, uh, and we, we made this point in Professor Dave's video, um, are all the Claudina uh, designed? Were they designed by God in the Ediacaran? Or were the Claudina designed by God in the Ediacaran separately designed from the ones in the Cambrian? When you start posing questions like that to really test what their model is about, you realize pretty quickly they have none. Mm -hmm. If you ask them what do they expect to see in the fossil record based on intelligent design, they don't have an answer. Uh, th they this, just this have is... not evolution. Go ahead. This is why a guy who wants to do a series on intelligent design only talks about evolution and, and nothing, nothing in, in, as an right. alternative. Yeah, it's right. There's no alternative when. You... Go ahead. It's, it's it's basically what what you're saying is is Arn's phylogeny challenge. If you put that yes. to them, then it's over. They they will do everything. They will squirm to get out of it. Get to a different topic. Uh, you won't get an answer. Right, exactly. It, it really is just the phylogeny challenge, just on a broader scale. Yes. If you pose to them, um, so like, yeah, there was a radiation. There were actually two different radiations of mollusks. So like, um, you know, scallops, clams, snails, octopus, um, all those guys. Those are all mollusks. If you put it to them that in the Cambrian, there were two different radiations of mollusks. There was a radiation of very primitive mollusks at the start of the Cambrian, and then a radiation of more advanced mollusks at the end of the Cambrian. Does that sound evolutionary or is that designy? <laughs> and there's not, there's again, not really an answer to that. They're just kind of like, well, it's, well there are radiations. Okay. Well, they, yes. They, 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 will, they will say, oh, it's all, it's all the one phylum. So it's all the same thing. Right. And then you can kind of push back with like, okay, what about Kimberella? Is Kimberella? It's, it's adaptation, it is, Jackson. Who transitional? Who transitional? It's, right. It's, it's too transitional. What did you say, Peter? Yeah, I said it's just adaptation. That's what it is. Right. Uh, RJ puts it out or puts it in the chat. Um, what would an ancestor for basal chordates look like? How easily would it be preserved, and how would it look different from what we found? That's another example. So the mm -hmm. earliest chordates, which are so we are in the phylum Chordata, we have like pharyngeal arches, we have a postanal tail, a dorsal hollow nerve cord, and a notochord. So we have these characteristics which all chordates have at least at some part in their at some point in their lifetime. Yeah. And the earliest members of our phylum are like little wormy fishy guys. They look sort of like worms with fins, with like a single so dorsal swimming fin. Swimming worms, basically, yeah. Yeah, they look like little swimming worms. They don't have side fins or ventral fins. They just have one little fin that goes kind of on their back and sort of loops to the underside. That's it. And so if you were to ask, well, what, what do you expect? Does this look like what you think the ancestor of all chordates would look like? Does it live when the ancestor of chordates you think would have lived? Are we related to that guy? And of course, no, because humans are separately created. But, you know, for other right. organisms or for other organisms in that phylum, like are I, they related I, I, to no, it? Like they, they will never use the, a term like phylum in any other context except for the Cambrian. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you, a... yeah, if you try to ask them, are humans... Or, well, okay, fine. Let's try a different one. Are humans, humans, are, say, humans are, are, are special? Humans pretty much the same. Are humans pretty much the same as chimpanzees? And they say, no, 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 we are totally different. And then, all oh, right, what, what, what is a phylum then? What is a phylum? Right. Oh yeah, they, they have essentially the same body plan. That's what the phylum means. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, because you know, and because humans are, are the special case. But for something like you know, an elephant, like is an elephant related? Are elephants related to dinosaurs? And are elephants and dinosaurs related to the Cambrian chordates? 
uh, you won't you, get that answer. You might find you that some yeah. some creationists will tell you that mammoths were dinosaurs because they came in the <laughs> that, same place. That be the case. They came in the same place set in the dinosaur place set. Yeah. So yeah, you, you will have that. And as far as uh, humans being the the special creation, everything else was just poofed into existence. To make humans, yeah. God well, used was... God used dirt. Just let I thought that the woolly mammoths were what the cavemen the cavemen hunters rode when hunting the tyrannosaurs, right? Right. Is yeah. That how it works. I, well, my, my my natural history was uh, very comic booky. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so the well, you know, in in the U.S. In, in you have these. Apologies was too, and you know, look at him now. So. <laughs> <laughs> In the U.S., you had these dinosaur playsets. We had them in the Netherlands as well. And yeah. if you had a dinosaur playset, there would be a mammoth in there. There would be uh, a pterodactyl in there. A dimetrodon. Uh, plesiosaur. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, that's where you get your science from. Children's toys. Right. Very right. accurate. Yeah. And so, so, sort of the broad... The broad sort of point is ID proponents don't believe in a literal Garden of Eden like the Young Earth creationists do. So the closest mm -hmm. they kind of get to this is the Cambrian explosion. I think they, I... they try to paint the Cambrian as this is when God created. And Life. so I'm not so yeah, I'm, right, not, I'm when... not entirely sure about that because we did have Kitzmiller versus Dover, which had an uh, a creationist book that just had some words changed and it became an id proponent book if you ask if you ask most of like the top ideas like michael behe stephen meyer um uh uh, uh oh frick uh michael dem or yeah michael dembski isn't it michael dembski anyway dembski uh meyer behe um actually i don't know about wells if you ask those guys denton he's another one they don't believe in a literal garden of eden all of them don't now yes you're right they they did literally just co-opt a creationist textbook into yeah. an ID textbook, and that says that speaks pun intended volumes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I think the organization is uh, different than the, any particular individual. Like a particular right. individual can have like their own personal beliefs, but the organization, yeah, they, they grew out of the young earth creationists who who were seeking to evade the uh, uh, Edward Fergus versus Aguilar decision. Right. Yeah, but oh, William is, Dembski. It was isn't William that Dembski. isn't that just to to make their point because it is literally creationism in a lab coat, so they wanted to set themselves apart, so they will have to make some uh, uh, concessions when when it comes to that. that. No, so yes and no, it depends because they're like there's Ann Gager and Jonathan Wells who are like probably creationists in disguise, like young Earth creationists, but then there are others like Michael Behe who are definitely on the yeah, the oh, yeah. Earth is yeah. old, and and common ancestry yeah. is true. Um, yeah. So it really depends on on who you ask in their camp, but because they vary tremendously. And I, very, I, 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 will, I will, I will, I will, I will always that. say, yeah, I will always say, the organization as a whole is uh, creationism in disguise. But uh, any particular individual can be or cannot be. A, a, it, it depends right. on the individual. Yeah. Right. What were we saying, Jefferson? I was I was going to say I think for, there are a lot of individual Christians that um, have you know who um, have issues with literal interpretations of the Bible, especially the you know you know the the, the Genesis account, the Garden of Eden. They're they're mm -hmm. going to and when I was um, an older you know well in my twenties and stuff, I, I didn't. I would probably be like in the Behe camp where I believed right. it was. Uh, it's just a it's a it's a a tale used to tell more allegory than anything else and that you know right. there was some kind of uh and something like the cambrian is yeah that's what it's representing just the origins of all life when god created stuff so yeah um i mean and i i sincerely held that so i i, I don't have a problem believing that there's ideas Jefferson, that that's, i think that's that there just, are people that are it's just blasphemy if you don't have original sin you have no reason for jesus don't well no know? that's actually not the biggest problem that's not the biggest problem. You can get original sin with that theology. The toughest thing is you can't get the Calvinist idea of uh, 
uh, image makers being made in the image of God can get kind of tough and people be like, Oh, well, it's the soul, but then yeah. you get run into issues. Well, well, when did that get uploaded and at what stage in human development? Yeah. You know, I mean, things get really weird, but uh, most, most Christians when they get to that point are willing to, to like put a pin in that and be like, well, who knows sure. God's mysterious, but they sure. can, they can legitimately hold that idea. There are probably plenty of ideas that are trying to use ID to kind of submarine in some yak stuff later on. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think in, that there are. In all fairness, in them. all fairness, Jefferson, you can get original sin just by watching the Dutch because we, we had full frontal nudity in the sixties on TV it was no problem. I mean, <laughs> well, I was going to make a crack about the fact that like, I mean, if you want the, if these people really want to appeal to a design argument, tell them about the penis word worms and just say that proves that God's Dutch. If yeah. he makes dick worms, he's, he's a Dutch. He, yeah, I mean, <laughs> He's oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I can't honestly argue against. <laughs> there there are some creationists that I will confront with the penis worm and ask why did God create that? What was it? What were his thoughts <laughs> behind it? Have God you seen this sense of humor? Have you seen this swimming boner over here? God <laughs> made that. <laughs> yeah. They're honestly kind of cute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, back to the video. Back to the video. Never get off the ground, not even in principle. The difficulty of classifying these organisms is due to the fact that they don't qualify, or at least not unequivocally so, as actual animals, since they lack those fundamental <coughs> animal features that we just mentioned. That's why the magazine <coughs> Nature noted that if the Ediacaran fauna were animals, they bore little or no resemblance to any other creatures, either fossil or extant. Others have called these organisms I'd be a of a moment. new kingdom. In like, if they if they are uh, if they are if they all include the all the uh, essential features of animals, then they are not transitional. But if they lack all the essential features, then they are too transitional. Like it's the same it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Uh, of a new kingdom. Uh, well, so they actually are members of totally extinct phyla. Like Dickinsonia and Spurgina are members of Proarticulata, which is an extinct phylum of stem bilaterians. So yeah. Also, I mean, also Deflet is uh, adhering to the creation tradition of being always being out of date. Look at the citation below. Ninety-seven. Yeah. yeah. Oh God! I, I was just going to point it out. One one from two thousand and twelve, and one from nineteen ninety-seven. Very up to date science. The twenty twelve uh, one well, isn't bad. The problem is it's it's a popular article. It's not a yeah. it's not also, an actual uh, technical paper. So. Uh, it it like uh, the Rangium was like Charnia, like they they were once considered to be like a a, a new kingdom separate mm. from uh, plants, fungi, or animals. But I think e e even the uh, Charnia, like the uh, the weird little frond like things, I think they are uh, they tend to be uh, classified as at least stem. Uh, metazoans or stem you metazoans yeah. something like yeah. that yeah same with uh with trilobozoa the the weird yeah. like triradial symmetry guys they're also considered stem animals nowadays so yeah we're yeah not, 97 jeez louise we're we're now getting dutch comments about penises I, in, I, in that, the chat that <laughs> i'm just saying i just want to point out that citation is as old as me thank you jamie oh, I, 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 I was two years old at the time two years yeah. <laughs> uh, and you, Peter? How old were you at the time? In in ninety seven. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, thir thirty five. There you go. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on. Keep going. Yep. I cannot. Can I point out one more piece of stupidity? Sure. Go ahead. Evolution kind of says the same thing. Dirt, mud, dirt or mud has tiny metal plates, which apparently creates tiny sparks, which create life. Yes? No. I'm I'm not aware of that hypothesis. No, I th I think <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. that might be a tiny plate, but it it might be somewhere else. Somewhere. Uh, no okay. way. I, it's. I, I remember uh, Ben Stein. I think he's called like he he like he always says the. Uh, the catchphrase uh, lightning strike and mud puddle, but apparently the mud puddle yeah. created the lightning strike in this case. Uh, <laughs> I... There's lightning uh, in that mud puddle, yeah. Yeah, yeah lightning cool. in the mud puddle, yeah. What, uh, 
uh, Peter, you want to read that to us in 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 Dutch? Uh, yeah, Jamie comment? Jamie E said, and and God saw the penis worms, and they were good. <laughs> But he wrote it in Dutch. I love it. Thank you. Okay, continue. That's amazing. Well, I mean, yes. he's not wrong. Entirely yeah. separate from the animals. Therefore, the most notable organisms of the Ediacaran from the Australian hills are mm. off the table as possible precursors of the Cambrian <clears throat> animals. So, where does please this do some more recent research? To explain please, the I beg Cambrian you. explosion of animal forms by resorting to the Ediacaran fauna. Well, in a best case scenario, we have a total of four Precambrian animals which could serve as the intermediates no. for the Cambrian ones. Four. The sponges and no. Kimberella are two of them. The other two are the unidentifiable animals which supposedly caused trace fossils. But incorporating them <sighs> in the hypothesis comes with a heavy load of optimism. Oh, oh, Yet, hold on. even like, such an overly he, hopeful. He, <laughs> pause for a moment. Pause, Peter. Like he, like he, he says there are only two, four animals, but he. His his list, his list includes four, but one how? of them includes lots more animals than like. How did he get? Uh, how did he get to two animals for the trace fossils? How did he know that there were only two? Oh, he's never gonna tell us that because I that would be amazing. That would be uh, amazing. He's blatantly, he's blatantly artificially reducing the number of fossils that we have from the Ediac run. So, yeah. Jackson, do you think he might be engaging in uh, proctomancy? In what? Proctomancy. Acquiring <laughs> information. Ask, acquiring information by plucking it out of one's nether regions. Proctomancy. I think that's I what's happening. Yes. I learned that this week. I, I that's. I'm going to use that a lot. You were you were looking to like weave that into normal conversation. Yes. Definitely, definitely. I, I think you're right. But you're, the other thing is, is um, Nestle's right. It was two plus another two plus three, so that's actually seven. Mm -hmm. So that's seven fossils. Yeah, <laughs> which have been reduced to two apparently. Anyway, I, I'm, st I'm right, still baffled by how he knows that there are only two animals that made the trace fossils. Where did he get that from? Yeah. That I don't I'm, even think that's in. I'm pretty sure that's not in Darwin's doubt. So he pulled that somewhere else. Well, he Never he figured out he figured Never out that he was going to say that there were only four animals, two that we know of. So now I need two more. Okay, I'll I'll just invent those and those made the trace fossils. There, done. That's how we do science. What if we're misunderstanding him? What if we're misunderstanding? What if he thinks there were actually four total animals in the yacker? It's entirely possible. <laughs> It's entirely possible. <laughs> he's like, that's all he's aware of. So that's all he thinks mm -hmm. we're around. Oh my god! Okay. Continue. I, I know that's. A, I know. We're, we're, I, just a joke, folks. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to you. Full best case scenario featuring four Precambrian precursors to the Cambrian animals does literally nothing to solve the problem of the Cambrian explosion. And here is Oh, why. I knew that was coming. Recall from my first video that a wide variety of animals representing as many as 20 different phyla pop up suddenly in the Cambrian era. The phyla, as you may remember from that video, constitute the friend. highest or widest categories oh, of God, biological classification <laughs> in the animal kingdom with each exhibiting a unique architecture, a... organizational blueprint, or structural body plan. Here, pause. Here are three examples oh, of... So, so there's so many problems with this. First of all, uh, taxonomic ranks are arbitrary. It does not matter how you define them. They're going to be arbitrary. Don't care. Fight me. The other yeah. reason this is dumb is, why do you cite Stephen Meyer, a dude who's not a paleontologist, not a biologist? He has a single science degree, which, you know, props to him is in geology. So why do we care what he thinks about biology? Um, you know, his degree, he's uh, like a doctorate in philosophy of science, which great, good for him. Not relevant. Neither is his geology degree. Also, um, the the, uh, the bit about, like, even if this is true, it doesn't matter. That's, it's like uh, RJ's no cousins rule, which are uh, one of his, his ideas. Um, even if they're related, it doesn't matter. Even if this fossil is transitional, it does nothing. Like, there's nothing you could possibly bring up 
which would get them to say, okay, this is sufficient. I'm satisfied with <laughs> this fossil. Uh, eventually, uh, you can go full Michael B and say fossils don't matter at all. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> even when, and then the funny thing is, flip side of that, when you show them things like foraminifera and diatoms and coccolithophores, which have like actual species to species transitions in the fossil record, they don't care. Those are the fossils they never talk about because they don't care. It's not about the fossils. It's not about being right about paleontology. It's about making an elongated altar call to Christianity. That's all this is. That's all it ever was. Like, well, I, I did it's like, not about science, folks. I, I did like the touch in the, the previous uh, green that he had the red letters in there. That's really biblical. Because obviously in the Bible, yeah. the red letters are the words that Jesus himself said. So this is why he uses uh, the red for, for emphasis. Nice touch. Uh, very nice. Yeah. And I, I also want to add, like he, like he quoted to Stephen Meyer about uh, phyla. You also you already mentioned how phyla is an arbitrary term. But the, uh, Stephen Meyer also says that the phyla is the widest or largest category within the animal kingdom. Like, no, you have... Nope. You have, to, you have categories like eumetazoa and also bilateria. And you have also terms like you have also terms like crown groups and stem groups. But, and these terms are never used, or at least never properly used by the ID proponent. Yeah. Well, even just like Linnaean taxonomic ranks, like you have superphyla. That's a thing. Panarthropoda, yeah. for anyone who's not aware, is the superphylum that includes arthropods, velvet worms, and tardigrades. Deuterostomia. Although, yeah. is although a, I, I, would, I would like to move on beyond the superphyla, subphyla, uh, it's, it's a whole uh, oh, kind I of worms. It's, yeah. it, it's super arbitrary and totally pointless. Yeah. But um, well, actually, we're coming up on the out on the, the second hour. So actually, what we're going to do is we're, we're, we are going to. I was just going to say we're, we're not going to finish it, it anymore because we have four minutes left in the video. Yeah, and we have a little Wait, over really three have minutes, minutes left. Of the video left. It, yes. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Peter. Next time we'll 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 finish this one and then we'll go on to his next video. How about that? Oh, good? goody! Sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, well, guys, uh, what's going on on your channels in the near future? Uh, well, I guess I'll go first. Um, I don't have anything planned yet. Um, but I I am um, well, I'm going to be doing some you know more uh commentary on some. Probably cringy Darth Dawkins commentary. Tom <laughs> Rabbit actually dro dropped a, a new one um, today, yesterday, that I, I haven't watched yet, but I'm going to check that out and probably uh, make fun of him for the things he says in that, because that's what I do. Yeah. And, and for okay. people who haven't cool. seen it, Jefferson had Arn Ra on last week. And not just nice. Arn Ra, he had actually a talking snake on. Yeah. Did, did you? Yes. That, oh, yeah, Arn's, uh, yeah, Bull Snake is quite chatty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Durango oh. likes to make some racket. Yeah. Oh. So we did We did have that. Was, right. he, he, he kept hissing on the mic. It was, <laughs> yes. after a while, I found it, I'm like, is, I'm like, Arn, is, is that snake hissing? He's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's not happy. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> like, I hope we don't see Arn get bit by a bull snake on camera. That'd be just my luck. I got, I made a bunch of rattlesnakes mad uh, when I went to Memphis recently. It's like, because we walked, we, we got to go in the, uh, the, the toxic Ooh. room and it's like, you know, boxes of, of various species of rattlesnake. And as soon as we opened the door, it was just, just the whole room. <laughs> We're like, oh, they're not happy. Okay. So, Arn, recent, Arn recently had a snake paleontologist on, and uh, because Arn doesn't know everything, he also invited a friend who is uh, 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 who, who owns a lot of snakes and, and knows a lot about it. And after we went off air, this guy literally put a rattlesnake in front of the camera, rattling. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Either. Well, look, well, look well, what well, I, I, I got! One of defect. these too, and he held it in front of the camera on a on a. Uh, oh damn! Were they defanged? No. Were they defanged? No. 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 <laughs> no. Maybe milked. Or milked. I, I don't know. Yeah, where they? Where, they I don't know. Tiny teeth. 
I don't know I, if that's I, I, I wouldn't I, 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 I wouldn't touch that danger noodle myself. So. <laughs> no, danger noodle. <laughs> I yelled it up on the camera. It was it was happily rattling away. Uh, that was, uh, uh, yeah. Happily. Now you hand me a penis worm. I'll handle that all day. Yeah. They're quite affectionate. <laughs> they like to be stroked. I mean, that just goes goes with the animal. But <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but I'm not handling a danger noodle rattlesnake. No. <laughs> no. They are at, tempered. At, I did I did um, like it at some point. Arn had the snake in his hair. And it was moving all about, and he said, "Well, now I'm slowly <laughs> turning into Medusa." I, I, it was a nice touch, but I don't think anyone followed the conversation at that point. Everyone was looking at what the hell is that snake doing? Where's it going? And then it it yeah. wrapped around his neck, and so it the 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 bull snake is a constrictor. So it wrapped around his neck, and it looked like like Arn was wearing a snake tie. So yeah. I was waiting for somebody to make the comment in the live chat. Like, I really don't care about the conversation these two are having. I just want to see where this snake ends up. It, they it, did make know. that comment, actually. What did they, what did Some, they, someone like said, I, I'm, I lost ear. the entire conversation. I'm watching Arn's snake tie. Some, something like that. That was put in the comments. <laughs> Yeah. That's gotten a lot of views, so that's probably yeah. I owe Durango like a, you know a, a meal or something. So mm -hmm. um, let's see on on this channel we are we'll be coming out with the marsupial moles tail in the near future. So we're finally leaving the placental mammals and ending up among the marsupials. So getting close to the end of the mammals. There's only two more tails for mammals left, and then we'll travel to our next group of amniotes. You know, it's pretty cool. I think. And I'm going to do a Christmas video. Nice. Having made having made a Photoshop of myself as Dobby the house elf before, it's going to involve a sock. That's all God. I'm going to say. And only a sock? That's your only okay. piece of wardrobe, right? Am I right? It's 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 going to be a special sock. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Special. You, <laughs> He's gonna, I'm pretty he's sure gonna, that's what the teenagers call it too. He's gonna put know. a sock on his penis fish. That's what he's gonna I'm do. Not, there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not telling anything. What I'm going to do with the sock? I'm not. You have to watch the video. Okay. All right. Well, and on that note, Christmas. Uh, we are gonna head out. Sure. So, thank you guys for coming. I yeah. appreciate having you guys on. Uh, hope to have everybody on again at some point. Uh, thank you, everybody in the live chat for being there and, and putting up with us. We appreciate it immensely. So we'll see you guys next time. See you next week.